Mala. If you'd like more information, give The Lodge a call at 352-694-2461 or go on Facebook to Marion Dunn Masonic Lodge number 19. The public open house event is sponsored in part by BTB Contracting. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! All right, six minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Monday morning. Robin, I have... Never, I don't think. No, I think I have watched an episode or, or part of an episode of The Biggest Loser. I, I think I watched a YouTube video, and uh, I think it was in the beginning of the uh, the series. And so it would have been several years ago, right? I just went online to check out some photos of our next guest, Jay Jacobs, and uh, the before and after says everything. And this one where he's looks like he's running, and he's got some kind of a. a, a a chest brace on it looks like a couple of guys have a chest brace on. i'm not really sure what that is but anyway long story short you know whenever you see any any of these guys or or ladies that have lost a lot of weight um have done amazing made amazing changes in their physical appearance i I, and and everybody wants to ask them how did you do it what can i do to do the same thing you know what i want to know is how has their life changed what do i mean what has this done for you what what opened up that wasn't opened up before it's just it's just heart not heartbreaking what's the opposite of heartbreaking it's a heart wrenching wrenching no there's a good there's got to be a good word heart elevating heart lifting (laughs) it's heart lifting uh jay jacobs is known as the teflon contestant i don't even understand that um he was uh on the biggest loser tv season number 11 it says here he has a book called smartphone fit how you can use your smartphone and social media to mindfully lose weight and keep it off for life uh and he's going to talk about all those things and more let's let's uh chat with jay jacobs good morning jay Good morning, Larry. Where are you? Where are you calling from? I am calling from West Orange, New Jersey, which is about 10 miles west of Manhattan. Oh, okay. And Robin's nice. son lives in that general area. Yeah. Robin has a son up there. You know where Bloomfield is? Oh, definitely. That's about probably about two miles from me. Very mm-hmm. close. Oh, okay. All right. May I ask how old you are? I will be, this Saturday, 57 years young. Wow. wow. Good, Happy good for birthday. you. You look like yeah. a professor now that you've lost the way. You've got this. You've got this. I, I don't know. You just look really good. I mean, you, you've done a really oh, wonderful job. So, what? Well, tell us your story. When did you? Um, when? When was season eleven? When did you start with this whole thing? Well, it was about three years ago. Um, in May was our finale. Three years ago, we were done. Jennifer and I were on, as you said, season eleven. Jennifer, your um, daughter. Jennifer's my daughter. Yes. Okay. Okay. In actuality, yes. Jennifer. It was Jennifer's dream to be on Biggest Loser, not mine. She actually tried out for season nine, didn't make it. She was she heavy? Uh, yeah, Jenny. Jenny. She was close to three hundred pounds, um, and so Jenny was. You know, she'd watch the show. She'd seen a lot of girls transform their lives, and she was like, you know, I think I can do that. So she tried out for nine and didn't make it. Tried out for ten and didn't make it, and then um, they really liked her. And they said, is there somebody in your life that is in your family who can stand to lose weight? And I needed it probably more than Jennifer did. Um, I didn't know it at the time other than the fact I was just, you know, I, I, my top weight was 435 pounds. I mean, I wasn't, you know, I was really, really big. Um, but I was a little bit of a smart aleck about it because I didn't have, which is unusual for that size, I didn't have a lot of, um, I didn't have high blood pressure, didn't have high cholesterol. I called myself functionally fat because I was very active. But really, you know, bottom line, I was living a very unhealthy life. And um, so we got the chance to be on Biggest Loser, which over 250,000 people audition every season. Uh, You know, a lot of people audition. And so to be able to get on the show is really like winning the lottery. It's it's an amazing honor and opportunity to get on it. So what is is your profession? And and has it changed since you lost the weight? Um, before Biggest Loser, uh, my wife and daughter and I have a branding and marketing company. So we lived and breathed in the world of branding and marketing, design. And after the show, um, I still have a branding and marketing company, but I spend most of my time in the area of health and wellness, being able to really help people and paying it forward in terms I speak around the country, I publish books. Um, actually, my daughter Jennifer and I 
uh, and my uh, my wife are all health coaches. We just got back from LA, LA where we uh, were at a national health convention. So we speak, but more importantly, we do coaching with people because, um, you know, it's all well and good to be out there and, and share things and be inspiring, but we found that it's much more uh, rewarding to actually help somebody go through a transformation of not just losing weight, um, but really helping them reset their thinking and who they are and their beliefs about what they can do because losing weight's not really that exciting, but creating the life that you'd love to live is what we really spend our time on. Um, you know, obviously we have people understand what to eat and how to exercise, but I will tell you that unless you help somebody really rewire their brain and thinking, it doesn't last. It becomes a diet. They fall off and they go back and then they go bad because once again, they wow. fall off. Wow. Yeah. Do you know, and I don't know enough about this, but I just a, a tad that I read somewhere mm-hmm. that there are some critics of the, the way the biggest loser TV show approaches sure. weight loss and and I think sure. one of the, one of the biggest criticisms is that they push you too hard. Did you feel that? Did you feel like you were being pushed too hard by the show? No, and, and see, see what, here's what's interesting about it. What what I share with people when I have an opportunity to share it to a large audience is that if you watch the show or you watch the coming season 16 which is going to start September 11th, Watch it from the standpoint of what you're really looking at are myself and, and my other alumni and anybody that's going to be on the season. Basically, we are people that over time were kind of feeling like we were broken. We really felt like we couldn't do anything. We felt we were mer- very much just we'd given up on ourselves. And what you watch, it's not the weight loss. It's the, the transformation and the change in people's belief about what their personal potential is. And that's what I tell people all the time when I have a chance to talk to them is that it's not about weight loss. It's that you, if you can get in your head that you have an opportunity to create a new life for yourself, it's amazing. So what will happen is we'll have people that come up to Jennifer and I and say, you guys are inspiring. And people that are like triathletes and people that are like trainers and we're like, wow, how can, how can we be inspiring? Because what they see is we're regular everyday people. And if we can do something like that and make a change, then what wow. do they do as well? And so that is so think about it this way, Larry. It's a, it's a TV show. It's meant to be dramatic and bold and, and all that. And yeah, there's a lot of things they're pushing us on, but understand something. Before we get on that show, there's extensive medical um, testing they give us. And then every time we're there, there's medics that are on board. We're, we're in a cocoon of support. Um, so it, there are always going to be critics of people who think the show is right. better, different. Right. You know, so that's going to happen. But the TV show is a window to show what's possible. But when we go off the show, we're like everyone else. You go back to where you live, where your home is, you know, how you live your life. And that's the real critical part is have you taken something away from the show where you're able to live the rest of your life in a way that you're able to stay healthy? So it's not about being perfect. It's like a practice. It's, you know, it's like yoga. You're practicing that every single day. And what I can tell you, and it's helpful to have a circle of support of people that are there that are willing to be around you and support you through that process because it takes some time. I mean, it's not like all of a sudden the, magically your scale drops and you're, you are old for the rest of your life. Right. It's something that over time you right. just keep working through, you know, ups and downs with it. Jay Jacobs is our guest. He is a success story from The Biggest Loser TV show. And when we come back, uh, he's going to talk about a book that he has written. I believe he wrote it with his daughter, Jennifer. It's called Smart. Mm-hmm phone fit uh how do you can use your smartphone and social media to mindfully lose weight and keep it off for life a fascinating hmm better word than that motivational story for sure uh jay jacobs also known as the teflon contestant i didn't get that question answered yet i want to find out where you got that name from all right we'll be we'll be right back we've got to take a little break and we'll be right back Are you tired of not using your home's outdoor space for entertaining or relaxation because of all the bugs and leaves? Consider adding a beautiful screen room or glass enclosure. We are Superior Aluminum and Design, a family-owned and operated business with 20 years experience in the aluminum industry. And we are accredited by the Better Business Bureau. If you appreciate superior workmanship, call Superior Aluminum and Design at 817 817- 8058 or visit us on the web at superioraluminumdesign.com. The weather is brought to you by myfwc.com. Safe boating is no accident. Times of clouds and sunshine today with a couple of heavy thunderstorms in the area, mainly during the afternoon and evening hours, high 88 to 92. 
Partly cloudy overnight, low 70 to 74. Partly sunny tomorrow with a couple of heavy thunderstorms, the high 88 to 92. For Wednesday, clouds and sun with a thunderstorm or two, mainly in the afternoon, high 86 to 90. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Hey, I'm Gary. And I'm Eric. Did you know that Red Eye Radio is on WOCA, The Source, every night from 2 to 6 a.m., and it's live. That's right. No tape shows here. We know that the news doesn't sleep. And neither do we. So we're here with you live from 2 till 6 a.m. every weekday. Call us, 866-90-RED-EYE. So join me, Gary McNamara. And me, Eric Harley, every weeknight to discuss the latest in news and entertainment. Right here on WOCA, The Source. Hey, Matt, I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we, we do that, I need too. my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that, too. I need a new roof line, a new spoiler, and a new Yep, truck. we can even do that, too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show, too, huh? Well, as a matter of fact, join me every Monday at 10 for auto repair with personal care here on The Source. Of course you do. Now is the time to take advantage of Florida Credit Union CD specials. Our 36-month CD comes in at 1.26% APY. A 24-month is working for you at 1.0% APY. And our 12-month at 0.75% APY. All CD rate specials require $10,000 minimum. With friendly service and rates like these, it's not hard to see why Florida Credit Union has your CD options covered. Florida Credit Union, connecting your money to your life. Call 352-237-8222 for more information. Must act by 11514. All right, 18 minutes after 11 o'clock, and uh, Jay Jacobs is on the phone. He's one of the contestants uh, from The Biggest Loser TV show in season 11, which was, I guess, three years ago. He was a contestant with his daughter, Jennifer. Uh, he has done an amazing job transforming himself. So has she. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even know to look for her before we started talking to Jay. And uh, Jay, before you lost the weight, you looked like one of the guys from The Fifth Dimension. Even though he was black, it doesn't matter. I mean, you kind of yeah. kind of look like him, <laughs> <laughs> and and, that, and now you look like a professor at, at a school. So, uh, yeah, you That's remember that guy for the Fifth Dimension? No, I hope he's not listening. I, hope, yeah, I didn't I mean to offend him, <laughs> but, but he kind of had the look. Right, uh, so anyway, uh, why are you the Teflon contestant? What is that? Well, I've I've been called a lot of things uh, from the Teflon contestant, comeback kid. Here's part of the reason that that had happened. Um, I made it to the coveted final four. I was the only man that was left there was three women and myself um that were left in the final four and they also called me the comeback kid because when i told you before that 250,000 people auditioned for the show well in week seven i got eliminated because of gameplay and i went home i got sent home not because i hadn't lost a lot of weight but because one of the contestants really kind of thought i was a threat and he was threatened by jennifer and i because we had done really really well so I didn't want my daughter to leave, so when there was an opportunity and that so it was going to be one of us, I was like, look, I'll go home, let Jenny stay here. And so I went home. I thought my journey on the show was over. I was home for four weeks, and then I got a call from the producers that I had gotten chosen out of the ten remaining contestants that had left and that had gotten eliminated. I was the one contestant that got to come back. So I got on the show one time. And then I ended up coming back again um, four weeks later. We had the, you know, it was a great TV moment, as you can imagine, for TV. You have a father-daughter. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. And yeah. Away, you know, the big hug, and it was wonderful for Jenny and I. And I got to come back and be in the show, and I stayed clear to the actual end, was in the final four. And so I guess it's kind of a combination of Teflon kid, you know, Teflon. Got it. Okay, um, okay. So that. so I, thought maybe you were, I thought maybe you were frying eggs all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't sure. No, no, no. So what is no. the, what is that thing you're wearing on your chest? And, and it looks like another contestant behind you. There's a, a photograph of you running. It looks like. Well, there's so many photographs. One that probably was a life preserver, which was kind of like a you know, it, 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 in my size at that time, it looks like a little uh, halter top there. Uh, I don't know. I I don't know that it would have really helped me. But we were in a in a yeah, uh, really. town at the time um, where we were. Placing rafts across a uh, a river, uh. um, and we had to crawl across. So that was just a shot of that. I mean, so many different kinds of. Things. We were jumping <laughs> off the buildings. We were doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what that was. Uh, one one of the one of your most inspiring stories is that while you and Jennifer were losing the weight on television, that uh, your wife and son took it upon themselves to lose the weight on their own. Mm. Uh, what do you yep. think was the harder way to lose weight on your own or 
with yourself and your daughter when you had support all around you? Well, I will tell you, my son summed it up when he said, getting on Biggest Loser is like getting a fast pass to weight loss because um, the truth be told, you're in a controlled environment. You're eating some of the best food. You have some of the best trainers in the world. You have no distractions. You have no internet, no cell phone. You don't have TV. You don't have a job. You don't do anything other than focus on yourself. So the opportunity there is kind of like going away at a retreat, and now it's hard. There's no toys about it. It's very hard, but that's a fast pass. In the case of my wife and my son, they had seen Jenny and I struggle with our weight our entire life, and they knew that for them to help support us, they wanted to make sure that they got themselves healthy as well. So both of them lost weight while we were away. And my, my wife, which it's really funny because she looks so much younger. She lost 105 pounds. I mean, she's what people, women see her and they call her like she's reverse aging. It's just unbelievable of how much better she looks in terms of age and vitality and all that. So collectively as a family, we've lost over 435 pounds. Or as I tell people, we lost me. I'm, I'm like... At, we get much better gas mileage when we ride together in a car. I mean, <laughs> 435 pounds, yeah, I know? bet you so, do. I bet you do. Yeah. All right. I, so I, it, was, I, it was hard for them. So, yeah. so uh, when you go to a Thanksgiving dinner and you have a specialty, if you're a doctor, everybody wants to have free medical advice. If you're a lawyer, I guess everybody wants legal yeah. advice. And if you're a mechanic, everybody wants to know what's that noise in my car. What are people asking you all the time? How to lose weight? People ask me what we eat. They always ask me what they, they ask you how what you know how to lose weight, but the, what's the natural extension of that for most people, and, and this is really the truth of the matter, eighty to ninety percent, or probably I would say almost ninety five percent of weight loss and wellness is about what you eat, not even what you exercise. Now, understand. Let me make sure everybody understands this. Exercise is important. It's amazing. It changes your life. It's so powerful. But what most people don't understand is that 30 seconds of eating that, you know, that brownie or that, you know, cupcake or whatever that is can take an hour or more of very intense exercise to, to, to go away. So a lot of times people will try to exercise away a bad diet when the reality is, is that is if you eat like Jillian would tell you, which is really a good philosophy, Jillian will tell you if you eat 80% of the time really well and 20% where you have some luxury or whatever, um, you'll probably be fine. And, and so it's really what you eat. So what, what I tell people all the time is not about deprivation and all because that only works for a little while. And then what happens is like a rubber band, it snaps back. So it's really truly about being conscious of what you're doing, moderating what you're doing, and really being committed to what is that that you really want to eat in that particular day. And, and when it comes time for the holidays, or your birthday, or a special event. You want to enjoy that. It's not like you have to be dieting through that. It's so you want to make sure that through the week, really pay attention and be conscious about the kinds of things that you're eating so that it's just almost like creating a bank account. You're saving yourself up for those kinds of special moments where you, you savor it and you enjoy it. And most importantly, you don't go into the whole shame thing that goes, and that's the, that's the problem that happens. It's usually not what somebody eats the issue. It's all the dialogue that happens after they eat it and the shaming and, bad, and all the self-talk is just so destructive. And um, that, that's really the key to making a life change. Uh, we mentioned at the beginning, and I'm sure that our listeners who heard me talk about the Smartphone Fit product, or the book, rather, um, I, I want you to talk about that. And, um, and yeah, fill us in on that. What, what does the Smartphone Fit book tell us? How do we use our smartphone to lose weight? Okay, well, here's the, here's the simple idea behind Smartphone Fit. Smartphone Fit was created and written by our family on three principles. It's consciousness, being conscious of the choices that you've got. What are the choices you're having? And then the third part of that is conditioning. The conditioning is what I mentioned before, which is really like practicing it. It's not about being a perfect person. Smartphone Fit is not an app. It's a book. It's an e-book that you can download. And the idea behind it is using your regular old phone just to use a way to be able to sometimes take pictures of what you're eating, to be able to text people what you're doing, to be able to maybe possibly take a video and of, of yourself doing something or exercising it, and using social media. Because what we found is that myself, when I got to 435 pounds, it was because I was a secret eater. I was a secret eater to myself and to other people. I wasn't really paying attention to what I was doing in my life. So the idea is to take the phone that we have in our hand, the one thing that's like with us almost all the time, 
and you don't even need an app to do this, but to use, and the book has a lot of great, easy to do examples of how to use your phone every single day to be able to literally be much more conscious of what you're doing. Here's one great example. If you took a picture of everything you ate this week, okay, just took a picture of it, right. and then you kind of upload that into your album, all of a sudden you have a snapshot of like, what was my week really like? Because see, when people oh, talk wow. about journaling, well, yeah. see what happens. People want to talk about food journaling, but most of us are busy with our life and our job and whatever. And when the end of the day, like, oh, what do they want to forget? But if you actually just took a quick snapshot of everything and then looked at it in that week, you'll see like, you know what? I'm not even eating any vegetables. Or my God, I'm eating seven ba- every single day. I'm having a bagel every single month. There's a lot of what we do that's unconscious, and until you actually become aware, it's not even judgmental. It's like start to see what is it that I'm doing or not doing. Yeah. And that's the first step to making a change. And, and your phone's with you anyway. Everybody has that phone with them. So we just decided, and I, we found for ourselves collectively, that it became the one tool that we were able to use consistently. And we still use it as a way to be able to support. And that's why we've been able to not only lose the weight, but more importantly, keep the weight off. That's the real goal: is not losing weight, but keeping it off and staying well the rest of your life. You just not, you're not posting the photos to Facebook, are you? <laughs> I, no, it depends. You can I, I do post. I, I do post. It. There's all kinds of things. I post. Yeah, you know, a lot of times, what will happen is I have some people that I'll coach through where they'll share their weight. You know, because I tell people, think about it this way: people say, you know, how do you lose weight? I say, okay. You stand on a scale in front of 15 million people every week with your shirt <laughs> right, off, okay? Right, right, right. You will lose weight because, that, you know, that peer pressure. Now, you don't need to do it to that degree, but there are people that find by being accountable and not degrading themselves, but being accountable and being congruent with what their goals are, it helps them. They know there's an accountability, and, and, and it's important to them. But it, that's a personal preference to the degree at which you share whatever you're doing. And there's self-esteem issues involved with this. Did you also have psychological counseling on the on the show? There is some of that that goes on. Um, there, there's a lot of testing that goes on before you get on the show, and then they have a psychiatrist with you there. Um, and one of the things that we've learned over time is that um, it's important for you to start to create a new identity of what wellness would look like you for you in your life. What are you willing to do? And 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 it's the same thing about not trying to be perfect. It's like taking baby steps and I will tell you that as you go forward and you make some progress your brain starts to open up to new possibilities as you go down that journey so you can't imagine what it feels like to lose 100 pounds from that day one but as you go 10 pounds 20 pounds also your brain will start to allow yourself to do new things and new distinctions and so that's why you kind of need to stay in it to give yourself that opportunity because I can't explain that to somebody. Like, I can't magically make a wand go. And yeah, yeah. Out. Well, for the listeners, if you want to jumpstart your motivation, just go on on, new, um, on Google, whatever, and uh, search mm-hmm. for Jay Jacobs' uh, images, and you'll see before and after pictures of how he was so able to successfully uh, change his physique mm-hmm. and his, his beautiful daughter did the same exact thing she was beautiful when she was heavy by the way but i'm sure yeah. she's happier with herself now can i uh, ask you to give us a website or other information so yeah. we can get yeah. the book yes if you go to i know this is going to sound a little funny but the whole story is there it's called my m y e e t f a t dot com my pet fat dot com you will find the book you will find our story there. Um, you'll be able to find all the connection of anything. If anybody wanted to reach out to us and there's anything that we can help them with, um, we're always available. But it's mypetfat.com. Mypetfat.com. And, and I did yeah. see a pic. I saw a picture of the pet fat. That you, yeah. you're, you're, that's a great idea. I think you should make it red, though. It looks blue. It looks too pretty. <laughs> it should be nasty looking. All right. Thank you, Jay. Thank you for what you're doing and for being on our show today. Thank you very much, Larry. Thank you right, a lot. We'll be right back. Fox News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. The shelling continues in Gaza. Word from Palestinian officials that Israeli tanks have hit a hospital. At least four people were killed and 60 wounded, including 30 hospitals. 